Today we're diving into 25 things I wish I knew before I started YouTube. We just hit 25,000 subscribers on this channel, which I am so excited for. Thank you to everyone who has been subscribing, commenting, watching these videos. I appreciate you so, so much. It's made me think a lot about my own journey and everything that I've learned through the process and some of the things that I wish someone had told me. So let's jump right into it. First and foremost, just start. If any of you guys know some of my story, I actually started uploading videos on YouTube at the age of 10 and I stopped because I was embarrassed. But looking back at it, if I had kept going, I feel like I had missed so many opportunities and then trying to make videos again, it took way longer than it should have. In my head, it just seemed super complicated and hard. And I feel like I was just sitting on something that I really wanted to do because of of this fear in my head. So if any of you guys need a sign, this is your sign, you can start. No one is holding you back. It doesn't matter what people think. One of the biggest fears is what people might think about your videos, what people might say, whether that's people on the internet, people in your life, etc. And there's two quotes that I've really come to appreciate over the last year. One, your fear of looking stupid is holding you back. Two, what other people think about you is none of your business. And at the end of the day, if you're doing something that makes you happy, you're not hurting anybody and you're passionate about it, it doesn't matter what anyone else is saying. There's no such thing as a perfect video. I've uploaded over a hundred videos at this point and I can honestly say I don't feel like a single one of them is perfect or even close to perfect when I go back and rewatch them and that's because there's always going to be room to improve and even on YouTube I don't think there's a single video that's a hundred percent perfect. All that to say if you're stuck trying to make something that's perfect and you want your first video to be perfect it's not going to be and even if you think it's perfect in the moment which I felt sometimes you can go and look back and and realize things that you wish you'd improved upon and I think the sooner you learn to accept this fact the easier it'll be for you to just enjoy the process and find ways to make your videos better without trying to focus on this idea of perfect. Patience is a virtue. I definitely have heard this before. I'm sure all of you have as well, but growing on YouTube is not linear, meaning it's not always gonna go upwards. And also it might take a long time for it to even progress. I still remember my first uploads and being so excited to get 15 views. And then it went to 30 views and the rate to continue growing is completely unpredictable. Especially I would say like the first 50 to 60 videos, it really felt like I was speaking into the abyss and getting a few likes, letting myself feel discouraged, but finding some patience and enjoying the process will definitely help you keep sane. Building a community is one of the most rewarding parts. I didn't fully understand this before I started YouTube, but as I started making videos and also as I've continued to watch videos and be a part of the communities across other channels as well, it's helped me realize how special it is that you can actually connect with people and share stories. These are the people that are gonna be there to support you and going to lift you up as you make videos. So remember to engage with the people that are commenting and also engage with other channels. If you're enjoying a piece of content. You never know how much it can make an impact if you just tell that person and leave a comment. Embrace the cringe. I know this is something that a lot of people say and the phrase cringe has really made a comeback in recent years, but you're gonna feel cringy and other people might even think you're cringy. But going back to what I said earlier, it doesn't matter what other people think. I can almost guarantee that everybody you see that has successful channels now or have grown huge followings all have made videos that were cringe at some point. So you have to start somewhere. Even now when I wanna go and film outside, I still feel like I don't want to be cringy because people might think this and this and I have to remind myself it doesn't matter I'm not hurting anybody I'm not bothering anybody I'm not being disruptive so what I choose to do is my business it feels cringy that's because it's in my own head editing takes a sh load of time. I don't think I've talked to a single person that has said editing is super quick, super easy, and just like a really quick turnaround thing. For most of us, it's not. I can say now that it will eventually be easier and you might feel like it's easier, but it's still going to take time. So I didn't expect it was going to take as much time as it does when I first started making videos. And through the years, I feel like I finally just embraced that that's part of the process. Just budget yourself enough time and be graceful about it because it's probably going to take you longer than you expect. 
We're getting into some of the juicy things. People will try to scam you. If you want to work with brands, you should probably try to put your email in the description or on your channel, etc. You will probably get people reaching out to you that are trying to scam you. Just be mindful of that, especially with links. Do not click on every link that you see. I say this with as much emphasis as possible. Just like any other emails, there's phishing. People are trying to get your information. So just be mindful of that. I had a sudden influx of emails at a point and I was excited. And then it turns out they were all spam. Be cautious and look for the warning signs just like you would for any phishing emails. Speaking of brands reaching out, Working with brands comes with its own learnings. While I do think it's really exciting and I'm so appreciative of the collaborations that I've been able to do, I definitely did not know beforehand that there's a whole other skill set that comes with talking to brands, negotiating with brands, how to talk about you know the deliverables, how to share them. I did not know how to share my first video for brand review and I was kind of embarrassed. So when you get to that point, just realize that most of us have felt that way. And it's basically this whole other side of being a a creator or youtuber that is beyond making videos and it's really exciting but i did not expect that i would be so confused about this type of stuff also related to working with brands read your contracts and the sub bullet here is do not sign anything that has the words in perpetuity included i'll put the exact definition here but that's basically signing your life away and i'm not even exaggerating the amount of contracts that i have heard of and seen with those words is alarming because if you don't understand what it is you're signing your life away <laughs> so if i can give you one piece of advice here don't do that Equipment isn't everything. I've talked about the cameras that I use and while they are so helpful and I am really happy with the quality of my videos, what you guys may or may not notice is almost every one of my vlogs has iPhone footage. So even though I have a camera, I still rely on my phone. Basically every smartphone that's been released in the last few years has the camera capabilities for you to record a high quality YouTube video. When I was starting, I feel like I was really fixated on the quality and trying to invest in the best thing that I could afford. But I I wish I was less rushed to feel like I needed it as soon as possible. I've heard a lot of channels use their phone as their main camera, so you can get away with so much and just remember you do not need to splurge on getting the best camera possible. I wish I knew how many like-minded people were out there. When I started, it just felt like I was doing something weird that nobody else could understand, which is really funny because like we go onto YouTube and we see all these people making videos, but I couldn't wrap my head around that there's actually other human beings that are into doing the same things. And I'm so grateful that through this process, I've actually connected with people that make content, whether people on YouTube that I've connected with, or even in a recent program that I did with other creators. I wish I knew that sooner because it's helped me feel less alone in the space. I know some of you have said you wish there were more creators around your areas, but even finding people that you watch videos of and you comment on each other's videos, those types of connections I found are also just as motivating. And I wish I had a more positive outlook on that sooner because it can be lonely and isolating, especially you're talking to a camera by yourself, but there are other people that are doing just the same thing as you and trying to pursue their passions just like you out there. Always keep learning. Just like other areas of life, I've learned that there's still so much room to grow. I also wish I had known that it will look so different from when you're just starting out to maybe after you've reached a couple milestones on your journey. That doesn't mean that once you've hit a thousand subscribers, you stop learning, or once you get monetized, you stop learning. There's always gonna be room to learn and grow. For me, actually, like I thought that, okay, I'm monetized now, awesome, I've made it. But that's just one step in the journey. Even aside from the numbers, I think if you want to improve the quality of your videos, there's always going to be opportunities for you to learn and just keep an open mind about things. Not everyone is gonna like you and that's okay. If you're a people pleaser like I have been, this is probably gonna be a little bit hard to accept. Statistically speaking, I think you should assume at least 1% of people don't like you. And that's on the optimistic side of things. There's always gonna be an opportunity for someone to not like you. And the sooner we accept that, the better. <laughs> 
Remember who your audience is and who you're trying to reach. I do believe there's an audience for every type of content, every channel. It's just about making content in a way that appeals to them and also remembering who those people are. When I first started making videos, I didn't even think about that, which I think was totally fine because at least I started. But over time, I realized that having a clear idea of that can really help you figure out the type of ideas that you want to make videos about. And that can also help you grow your channel. So I highly encourage you even just like to have a rough idea of that. Consistency is key. I know this sounds so cliche and everybody says it, but it's because it's a thousand percent true. I really want you to take this in because when I first started, I just told myself, I'll try to upload maybe once a month. And then it was like once every three months, it was all over the place, but I had a good hard talk with myself and said, I'm gonna try to make at least one video every single week for a year and see what happens. If I didn't do that, I can almost guarantee I was probably not going to get anywhere because one, I wouldn't have had enough videos out there for people to actually find my channel and two I wouldn't have had the practice to actually improve my videos because like I said my videos were kind of cringe back then and not great and if I didn't continue practicing during that year I wouldn't have seen that improvement and I would probably be where I was at the beginning of the year people are going to find out about your channel. I really don't want you to be scared by this because I know what that feels like, not wanting people to know about your YouTube. Here's a confession. Only up until the last few months did people in my real life know about my YouTube, except for my boyfriend because he lives here and obviously I've had to explain why I have a camera and I'm talking to myself, but people that I work with did not know. My family did not know. People from high school did not know. And I was fully prepared to live a Hannah Montana life for the rest of my life. But I'm assuming if you make videos, you want them to potentially blow up and you want to potentially get traction on your channel. So if more people are coming to your channel, there's a very likely chance that people are going to find you from your real life at some point. It took me over a year and a half for that to happen. So do with that information what you will, but I would just say there's no guarantee that you can actually completely hide your content. Maybe you can use a fake name or something, but even then, there's always a possibility, but don't be embarrassed by that happening. It's just like hard to wrap your head around that. You want strangers to watch your videos, but not people that you know in real life. Make it make sense. I'm saying that to me, but I know some of you guys can relate. So just know that you don't have to proactively share your account because I never did, but there is probably a chance at some point in the future that somebody that you know might stumble across your channel. All right, you guys, I'm not gonna lie. It is quite a bit later, so the lighting is a little different, but we're gonna finish up this list strong. The next thing I wish I knew before I started YouTube is you can make some real money on YouTube, but you're not gonna get rich overnight. And I wanna say those two points because I think the role of like a YouTuber content creator is very romanticized and glamorized. That can be very appealing if you want to have your own business, you want to be your own boss, why not make content? But having experienced it and talked to so many people that have been on their own journey, it's not an overnight success. A lot of work that goes into being able to make money doesn't always get shown or you might not realize it, but you're not going to be making money on YouTube for probably a while. I've talked about my monetization journey and how many videos it took me to be able to get YouTube partner and then you know how much my first paycheck was, which I'm sure a lot of you guys came from that video. If not, I will link it, but just know that yes, you can make money, but you're not gonna be balling after you post your first video. Speaking of making money, AdSense is very unpredictable. Also, it's completely out of your control. You're being paid for ads that are running on your video, but only a portion of that, and you have no control over what type of ads or what the CPM, RPM are gonna be. Even looking at my AdSense for an example, in the last 90 days, my highest earning day was 10 times higher than my lowest earning day. That said, I'm not a huge channel. It might be more stable for certain channels than others. Don't be afraid to try new things, especially when you don't really have an audience. There's no one to disappoint. You're trying things that you are interested in. I think that's what keeps it fun and interesting. But even as you do start getting viewers and you do start building your community, I find myself sometimes thinking like, maybe I should just keep doing this one type of video or whatever. But then I realize I want this to be fun and I want to be creative. So I highly recommend pushing yourself to try different things and step up your comfort zone. For example, I recently 
recently uploaded a travel vlog and that was in a very different style from what I typically do. I was really excited to try that because I have never done something like that and if you enjoy the process and you're happy with how the video came out, it makes all the analytics and stuff less important because you're actually enjoying the process of making the video because you're letting yourself try and explore and learn from it. Stop comparing yourself to others. I didn't expect that I would find myself comparing myself to others that much, but one, I think it's human nature. And two, I think when you're really eager to try to grow and you see other people growing, you start to question what you're doing versus what they're doing. And it really gets to your head, but I really forced myself to just remember, you are not that person, you are not them, they are not you, and everyone has their own successes. It's gonna look different. It's also hard when you stumble across a channel that feels like they're already established or that they already have this many subscribers, but you also don't know the full story behind it. And also it's not relevant to you because you're making your own videos and you have your own audience. And while I like to be in inspired by people's growth. I also just want to always remind people that you still never know what could happen for you. You could potentially upload a video tomorrow and it gets a million views or it could happen in three months from now. All to say that everyone's journey is going to look different and the only person I think you should compare yourself against is who you were yesterday and the day before and stop worrying about what other people are doing. You'll need to decide if YouTube is a priority. For me, that was when I decided I was gonna give myself a year to upload a video every week. And then as I realized that was gonna take up more time than I thought, I had to figure out how I was gonna organize my schedule. And I don't recommend this for anybody, but I've definitely stayed up way past my bedtime on numerous occasions to get a video done. You definitely should be taking care of yourself and balancing your life in a healthy way. That said, I think it is about the mindset of whether this is important enough that you're gonna prioritize it, especially if there's other things that you might have to sacrifice. It's really your own personal boundaries and your own priorities that you're gonna have to figure out. Planning goes a long way. I actually didn't start planning my content out until the last six to eight months and it's made such a big difference. My planning process isn't super in depth, but literally just have a list or have a calendar, write out the ideas so that you're not scrambling. I promise you it'll make your life a lot less stressful. Remember your why. In case you haven't heard this phrase before, Simon Sinek has a book all around your why. And also I think there's a TED talk you can watch on YouTube. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. And it's really just around understanding your core values, your core beliefs, and the reason that you do what you do. I think it's really valuable to think about when you're doing content as well, because at the end of the day, you should still always connect back to why it is that you make videos, the impact that you wanna have. Those things I really, encourage you to think about because if you're chasing views there's always going to be another idea another trending thing but if you want to do this for the long run i really believe that focusing on why you're doing this is going to get you that much further Last but not least, remember to celebrate the wins. It doesn't have to be this huge milestone. I remember the first time I uploaded a video, I had 30 views in the first week. I was so excited because I didn't share that video with anyone. I felt like there's people watching this and I had no idea what I was looking at in the analytics, but that was still something I was excited for. And if you guys saw when I talked about my monetization, I was stoked about $2 on my first day. Whatever that looks like for you, like I said, we look at numbers all the time, but even if it's something else, that you've done and you're proud of and it's part of your journey just give yourself time to celebrate it I thought this was a really great way for me because this milestone was super special to me and something I've been really looking forward to and I wanted to just share some heart-to-heart -heart advice I hope this was helpful if you guys have any questions or perspectives of your own tips to share leave them in the comments I love to read your guys's thoughts on this stuff so with that said thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers if you haven't subscribed yet consider subscribing and check out other videos from me on this screen and I'll see you guys next time.